Good morning, everybody. This is Deanna with Food Bank Beautiful, and it is Saturday. Look at this dress. I love this dress. It is Saturday, September the 7th. It is about 9.15, I think, 9.24. And Grandma just woke up, so in a few minutes, I'm going to go help her get her day started, give her a gorgeous cup of coffee and some breakfast. I have had coffee. I've been up since 5 this morning. Uh, very peaceful, very quiet. Uh, drank my coffee in peace and quiet. Went out about six o'clock, put corn down for my crows and my wild birds, bird seed down for the, you know, little wild birds that are about that big. And then um, threw some corn to my chickens, got them fed and watered, and so all of that is good. Also, I went through my garden and I picked what was ready to pick, which was, <coughs> let's just take a look, people, um, a zucchini. I don't like to pick up cucumbers because of their little spiny things. Three cucumbers, a handful of cherry tomatoes, and one yellow tomato. So I have hundreds of tomatoes out there, all different sizes, but the average is about that big. And they are just green. I need some really hot weather. It's supposed to be 91 degrees today, but it rained pretty heavily last night. So... Um, we'll see. I did see three or four other zucchinis, but I want them to be a little bit bigger. I have a whole bush of jalapenos, green ones, but I want them to turn red. And then again, tons of tomatoes. And I also planted about, I don't know how many, maybe somewhere between 15 and 18 lettuce starts. Things I started from seed about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago even. And I just went around in my raised beds and wherever there was room, I just popped them in. I still have about that same amount and I have a bunch of kale also that needs to go somewhere. So I'll try to do that this weekend, get the last of my fall crops uh, in a container or in the ground. Now, all of that being said, today's video, Today's variety show, <laughs> full of bloopers. Uh, I want to focus on my continuing every bit counts challenge. And I'm thinking for sure I would love to get three things done today in the kitchen. One, I want to can a bunch of garbanzo beans uh, for my husband. He makes the best hummus in the world and I want to get that done. And I want to make pie crust and throw it into the freezer because I love to make quiche and pies in the fall, but I do not like to make pie crust. So I want to get those done and out of the way. And I also want to make some biscuits um, where you just cut them out, flash freeze them, and then store them and bake them when you want them. Both of those recipes, I think I'm most happy with um, Acre Homestead. You guys, I'm sure watch her. She's beautiful. She's talented. Her house is spotless. Her garden is spotless. <laughs> She's immaculate. I'm going to get my recipe from her. So if you guys want that kind of content, uh, you go see her. She's fabulous. If you don't mind a messy girl, stay here. And when you're done here, pop over and look at her. All right, so those are my three things. Now, I'm going to show you my kitchen because I want you to understand that life in my house is messy. And I'm not going to start any of my projects until my kitchen is clean. And right now, it is not. So let's go ahead and take a look. So over there, you can see my pressure canner uh, soaking in water. I've got some dishes. I've got some coffee mess on the counter over where is it I don't know if I can get it over there I've got this little horrible oh you won't be able to see it but the counter that I work on for you it's a mess it's got chocolate chips and Worcestershire sauce and stone ground mustard and zotter which is a spice that my husband uses to eat with his bread it's got my dirty vegetable garden. It's got my project book. I have dirty laundry right there. 
I still have two loads of clothes that I have not folded uh, because I have just not been feeling well and then I got lazy so they have been sitting on baskets on the floor at the edge of my bed for at least a week and probably 10 days hmm. yeah <laughs> so uh, once I get my beans in the canner then I think I will fold those clothes, make my bed, get everything fresh there. My kitchen will be clean before I even start anything in here. And we'll see what I can get done. So if I have the energy today, I also have five pounds of carrots that I want to make into juice. You know how I love my homemade apple and carrot juice. So that might be something we can do today. I do not have any apples, so I cannot process any apple juice today. I do have everything to make four quarts of chicken broth, but I might hold that one off until tomorrow because I have to make the broth in my canner and then can it. And that's a little bit of a lengthy process. I have some other fun things on my list, uh, but nothing that I can think of that we're gonna do today other than what I just said. So it'll be kind of short, I guess. Garbanzo beans, mm -hmm. <laughs> pie crusts, and um, some frozen biscuits made from scratch with a buttermilk biscuit mix that I made myself. So we'll do that. Okay, I will be back when I have a clean kitchen and am ready to get things going. All right, ta-ta. All right, that took a pretty minute. So my kitchen is reasonably clean. Um, I will show you the counter spaces of everything. I don't need it spotlessly clean. I'll clean it spotless when I'm done in the kitchen today, but it is clean enough for me to work. So um, over here, when I show you the picture of my kitchen, you will see a great big cookie sheet that's soaking on the counter. My husband, he doesn't like to be on camera, so I'm not gonna show him to you. But he's right there uh, scrubbing my cookie sheet for me. Grandma is right over here. Grandma, can you say hello? With, with words so they can hear you? <laughs> She's waving to you guys. <laughs> All right, she's cute as can be. She's eating her breakfast and she's sitting out to see if any of the birds will come out. Now, I am ready to make the garbanzo beans. My jars are right there and they're sterilized and clean. I just need to hunt up the lids and wash those. This is my garbanzo bean bag. Oh, Bigger than me. 25 pounds. I think we bought this about to say four years ago and while we do eat a fair amount of garbanzo beans you really don't need a 25 pound bag of garbanzo beans unless you are I don't know feeding a small country Lebanon Jordan Qatar you know some little tiny countries in Africa maybe Lesotho <laughs> I do not know uh, you might not be able to feed all of the country, but you could probably feed Cairo in Egypt with a bag this big. So anyway, I have measured out three cups of garbanzo beans. I need to sit down and pick through them, though garbanzo beans are usually just really, really clean and good. But I'm still going to give them a look-see. And then we're going to can six pints of garbanzo beans. And while I have those in my pressure canner, Oh my God. <sighs> I am going to fold a load of clothes that I am pretty sure has been sitting on the edge of my bed for at least a week. And if we're telling the truth this morning, it could be 10 days to 14 days. Those days that I was sick and just couldn't fold them. Then I got tired of looking at them. Now they're all wrinkly. I might just run them through the wash machine again without soap and throw them in the dryer because they're clean. But you know what? I don't want to fold them. I don't. Mm -mm. So my guess is I'm going to go run them through the wash machine and the dryer, and then they'll be not wrinkly, and maybe I can fold them and put them away. Yeah. Your girl, she's a lazy ass. Okay? Lazy ass. 
Okay, let me get this done. I'll come back to you and I'll either show you when the garbanzo beans go in the canner or I'll show you when they come out or I'll do both. We just don't know. Life is a big fat mystery, people. grandma over there she's excited because a bunch of birds have come in so remember when I said my garbanzo beans are pretty clean that's all the beans that I needed to pull out of three cups uh, five six seven and some of them are just beans that are broken in half I don't like to use uh, broken beans when I can beans so I pull those out as well all right let me get my jars and my lids and my vinegar and my paper towels all set up and we'll come back and can these beans and get on with the laundry. The laundry, people. Mm-hmm. That sat on the floor for 10 to 14 days. All right, it is time to can the garbanzo beans. I have warm jars out of the canner. I have my cleaned garbanzo beans. I have my salt, my non-iodized canning salt and my vinegar here and my paper towels so that I can take care of the jar lids. Now I'll show you one and then I will do the other five and then um, I'll fill them with hot water, throw them into the canner and then I'll bring you back when we're done. So right over here, here is a half cup of garbanzo beans. Let me bring you down. We're just gonna pop those into that jar and we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm going to fill it with water and put the lids on. Looks like I'm going to do three jars for you. So easy, you guys. Now, garbanzo beans are not expensive. I think um, they range, depending on brand, anywhere between, you know, 89, 99 cents. You might be able to find them cheaper in your area. Uh, the mid mid price is like 120 something, and you might be able to find them for 150 or a tiny bit higher. But why not make them for free if you have the beans? Which, <laughs> you know, I do. All right, let me get some hot water in here. I'll bring you back. We'll just briefly walk through how to do the lids and we're good to go. All right, we're gonna debubble and measure head space. So I'll bring you down here. First thing I like to do is just take the little spoon and see if there's any air bubbles. And I like to watch the air bubbles come up to the top. When it doesn't do that anymore, then I think I've got most of them. That one looks good, and this one looks good. And you know what? I can't remember if I salted this water. Yes, I did. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Put your lid on. Well, first of all, we have, <laughs> I was trying to get ahead of the thing. We have one inch head space, so that is perfect. That one is perfect, and that one's perfect. So now I'm just going to take three pieces of paper towel. I like to dip it in my vinegar, go around the edge, make sure there's nothing sticky. I also like to get the band, give it another feel. That looks good. There's that and that. And you just want to screw it on fingertip tight, okay? Don't be cranking it on there, people. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pop this back into my canner. Super easy. There is no reason in this world why you guys cannot can if you want to. If you don't like to can, don't can. If you don't have what you need to can, you know, that's some people, right? Don't worry about it. Some of you may not can, but you may find ways to save money on your groceries and your food. Um, some of you might coupon. Some of you might be so good at stocking up on sales. 
um, you guys are amazing. So good for you. All right, let me get these six in the canner and then I'm going to tackle those stinking dirty laundry, clean laundry that I don't want to fold. Actually, I might just take a wash rag, wet it and throw them in the dryer to get them all fresh again. I believe that's what I'll do. All right. All right. I don't know what you guys have been doing, but uh, I've been doing a lot. So I did get my um, clothes folded, the ones that I did not want to put back through or fold them because they were all wrinkly or whatever. So my towels, my dish towels, um, things that weren't wrinkled, I went ahead and folded those and put those away. The other clothes are in the dryer. I'll need to go check them here in a little bit and then I put a load in the wash machine. Now, since I was last here, I have finished my garbanzo beans. So right there, I have six pints of garbanzo beans. If I can find six clean pint jars and lids, I'll do another six pints of garbanzo beans. And that should hold me for, you know, three to six months. Now, also off camera, and you'll see some still pictures, I went ahead and juiced five pounds of carrots, some leftover cantaloupe, grapes, and a couple of oranges, and I ended up with two quarts of, one was pure carrot, the other was car carrot, melon, and grapes. And I put those in the freezer, so that will be delicious. Now. Those of you who watch me all the time know that we made a beef stroganoff the other day, and I have four quarts of that. So today, right now, I'm going to make that beef stroganoff and see how I like it. So over here in my rice cooker, I have rice um, going, and it'll take about 40, 45 minutes, so I'm not in a big hurry. This I'm going to stick in a pot on the stove. I'm going to thicken it a little bit and then I'm going to add some sour cream and some mushrooms and hopefully that will be really good because I canned <laughs> four quarts of it. If we like it, I may do that again. Now down here, while we're waiting for our rice, Let's take care of our biscuits. And our biscuits are four cups of my buttermilk biscuit mix. And this was found on melissanorris.com. M-E-L-I-S-S-A-K-N-O-R-R-I-S.com is where you can find the recipe for that. And we're just going to go ahead and get that done. So what I need to do is I need to find something to cut the biscuits out with. I need to get my little food processor to do the cold butter and the biscuit mix. And then I need to get some ice water ready. And we should be good to go. All right. So let me get that set up and let's see if we can at least get our biscuits cut out and in the freezer for flash freezing and then I will have biscuits for uh, whenever I want. All right, I'll come back to you. All right, my neighbor down the street just texted me. She's got a bumper crop of cucumbers and she is going to bring them to me and I am going to give her a loaf of my zucchini pineapple bread. So that will be nice. Um, so tomorrow I may have to make some refrigerator pickles. We'll see. I'm gonna have to think about that. I'll see how many cucumbers she brings me. I have a few, but if she has some extra, I can make pickles. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to Hmm, I'm missing my lid. I'll have to find it. I am going to make my biscuit mix. And the easiest way for me to do that is to use my own buttermilk biscuit mix. And I believe I just told you where that was from. And what I like to do is, let's 
see how much room I have. I like to put one cup at a time of flour into my little itty bitty processor right there. And I have four cups of mix and for every two cups I need eight tablespoons of cold butter. So if we have four cups, we're going to use four tablespoons and we're going to make four batches of biscuit and crumb mix. And I just like to come down here and cut it into some little chunks. Toss it in here. Can you see it? Can you see it right there? And just give it a little whirl. I don't want that butter. Uh oh, come on. I don't want that butter in in tiny fine chunks. So let's see what it looks like. Kind of out of room here. Okay. Let's see what that did. And I might have to run it through again because I can't see how well the butter did. Okay, so there's one, and I don't know if you can see, but that butter is a little bit smaller than I want. So I'm going to process the next batch, um, not quite as heavily. Again, about one cup of dry mix, about four tablespoons of butter. Let's give that a little whirl. another minute or two. Ugh. Screw that. All right, now because I think I'm going to have some company in a few minutes, I'm going to take my biscuit mix and butter and stick it in the refrigerator. I want that butter to stay cold. Um, I want big flaky biscuits and I need cold butter for that. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and we'll come back to it a little bit later and see what we can get done. Good morning, everybody. This is Deanna with Food Bank Beautiful and it is Sunday the 8th of September, it is about 10 in the morning. And while my husband has been up since, I'm trying to get dressed. Since my husband has been up, uh, he's been up since the wee hours this morning, but grandma and I just really crawled out of bed about an hour ago. So grandma is sitting right over here watching her birds. Grandma, do you wanna say hello? Honey, they can't see you wave. Oh, okay, I wave. <laughs> Grandma, do you want to file any uh, elder abuse complaints or anything while you have an audience? Not at present. That is so smart because I have not yet fed you breakfast. <laughs> All right, Grandma's doing fine. So I left you yesterday when we were getting our biscuit mix ready. And then I got a surprise visit from a neighbor who brought me a bunch of... Uh, cucumbers. Um, unfortunately, they were really big, and so um, there's nothing really that I could do with them. So I fed them to my chickens this morning, and they went crazy, mad, wild for them. But she stayed and chitty chatted with my husband and I for a couple of hours, and I never did get back to the kitchen. Now, an update. Hang on one second. Oh my God. Okay, Grandma is spicy this morning. And when I say spicy, I mean spicy. So yesterday, I told you that we were going to open up a jar of the beef stroganoff and that I would sample it for you. And only one of those things is true. 
I did open the a jar and I cooked it and uh, you know, I'm going to be honest, you guys, please bear in mind that this is only my personal opinion. Everybody's taste buds are different and I've been sick for a month now. So it could be my taste buds are all, you know, they're messed up anyway. I couldn't even taste for a long time. Uh, grandma ate hers like she had not been served a hot meal for months. She said she liked it last night, which, um, I believe her because when she doesn't really care for something, she doesn't eat it. <laughs> Hear her laughing right there. So I asked her again this morning and she said it was delightful, which is good because my husband and I did not care for it at all which is very sad because now I have three quarts of it on my pantry shelves. Um, there is a taste in it that I do not appreciate. I think it is the Worcestershire sauce um, gives it this funky taste and I, I can't eat it. My husband ate it, but he said he only ate it because he was starving. He did not care for it. So, this is going to be depressing, but here it is. I can keep my quartz on my shelves and I can make it for grandma. Okay. Yeah. Or I can feed it to my birds and just be perfectly happy that, you know, they're getting extra doses of protein, maybe once every couple of weeks. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but it did make me think about my canning. And I have one more meal in a jar recipe that I wanna try, and it's a chicken teriyaki recipe. And I don't think I'm gonna to get to it today, but maybe tomorrow we're gonna try that. If I like that one, great. If I don't, I'm going to no longer make meal in a jar recipes because it's, let's be honest, this is kind of a fail. When you make a meal in a jar um, and you don't like it, then you have some pint-sized jars, or in my case, some quart-sized jars of things you just don't like, and it kind of wastes your, your effort your time and your resources, whether you've got it from the food bank or whether you paid for it yourself. So I'm gonna spend some time contemplating that. Now, the plan for the day. My husband and my grandmother both want a big hot breakfast. So I'm gonna make them farmer skillet. You guys have seen me make that a lot. Um, potatoes, eggs, cheese, cowboy candy, spinach if I have it, onions and peppers is generally the rule. After that, I'm gonna clean my kitchen and then we're gonna pick up where I left off and that's the biscuit mix that we started yesterday. And this has just been in the freezer to keep my butter nice and cold. So I think that I will take this out I don't want it to come to room temperature, but I want it to be cold. So we're gonna make the biscuits. We're gonna make um, pie crusts that I wanted to make yesterday. And I also wanted to do bread crumbs yesterday. And so if you look over here, right, right there, on my counter you will see some packages of assorted breads that have been in the freezer a little bit too long. And I'm just going to crumb them down and toast them. I'll put some in a jar and then I will freeze the rest and I should have breadcrumbs as needed for the next probably three to six months. So that is the plan. Are you with me people? <laughs> I also have one more load of clothes to fold. So if anybody lives in my area and loves to fold clothes, baby, you come over and fold clothes and I will send you home with canned goods. <laughs> I need a maid. I need a wife. <laughs> I always told my husband he could have two wives. If he wanted a second wife, I'm fine with that. But I have to be the prettiest. I have to be the youngest. 
and I have to have the best figure. <laughs> He's pretty sure he doesn't want to marry a second person under those conditions. Actually, he's mortified. There's no way he would want a second wife. Uh, he says one is enough. <laughs> trouble. Am I trouble? I don't think I'm trouble. I think I'm nothing but lovely. Anyway, enough of that. So let me get breakfast going for the family. Let me clean my kitchen. It's not too bad, but I do need a clean work surface. And then we'll get some preservation projects done. Although I didn't get as much as I wanted yesterday, that's how real life works. All right, I'll be back. Ta-ta. All right, while I am right here cooking dinner or breakfast, it might be dinner time before it's done, I am also cleaning out my freezer. And one thing that I did that I have not done before is I put some convenience foods in these nice containers that I have. So here's tater tots. Grandma loves tater tots, so she gets them probably once or twice a week. Yum, 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 yum she says. And then I have some Tyson chicken tenders, and right here you can see that I cut out the air fryer uh, directions. And right here I have a container of Grandma's corn dogs. She loves those. And a lot of times when she won't eat something else for me, she will eat that. So I am going to put these in my freezer. I just wanted you to see. And then I'll um, take a picture of the freezer when it's done. I took a before, so I'll take an after, and you'll be able to see it. Okay, it is 11.38. Grandma has just gone in to take her nap, so she'll be good for the next couple hours. Um, Addie is napping, but I need to get busy on these projects, so let's continue. We're going to continue on our biscuit mix, because these are biscuits that I want to flash freeze, uncooked, and then be able to pull out three at a time for meals and have biscuits without having to do this whole process. So this is my biscuit mix. Let's go ahead and look down here. Admire the cute shirt. And my butter is still pretty nice and cold in this mix. Yeah, it feels really good. So I am going to add one and a half cups of whole milk. So there's one. And here's the half. And again, this is for a double recipe, and I'm using a recipe from Acre Homestead as a kind of a guideline, although I did use my own biscuit mix, so not everything is the same. Let me grab a spoon, or a spatula, I guess. And let's give that a mix. I just wanna mix that up. We're going to have to roll it out and cut out some biscuits. And I don't want a lot of um, fussing with it. I just want it to barely combine. And at this point now, I'll use my hands. My hands have just been washed over at the kitchen sink, so all is well. And that's looking good. I'm going to put half of that right down here. I need to get a little bit of flour. I forgot to do that. Okay. Not too much. Just enough to be able to work this dough around. And I want big fluffy biscuits, so I am not going to roll this out very thin. If I get eight biscuits out of this, uh, I think that that will probably be good. You guys see that okay? Alright, let's just give it a little, a little bit of a roll. And 
that's, I think, it. I don't want it any thinner than that. Now, what I like about this biscuit mix is you can see your chunks of butter in the dough. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'll be back to you in a second. Okay, I'm back. I needed to get my fancy biscuit cutter here. Let's see how that's going to work. That's going to work just fine. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we got five, and I'm sure there's enough here for another biscuit, so let's, let's go ahead and roll one out. Again, I do not want to overwork this dough, so I might not even roll it out. I don't want them, I want them nice and big. go and let's do the next half now I'll go ahead and do that um, by myself but I will bring you back when I put them in the freezer okay I am now going to go ahead and put my biscuits in the freezer and we will have biscuits on demand for the next little while and it made a dozen biscuits so that's not bad make biscuits once and then the next three times you want them uh, actually for us it'll be four because I'll only make three biscuits at a time there we go you guys want to see down here And that is perfect. Okay, that project is finished. Let me put these in the freezer to freeze. Let me clean off this counter. And then I believe we will make pie crust. Okay. I took a little bit of a break just to sort of rest a little bit and it is now 1223 I also went out and checked my garden there really isn't a lot for me to harvest today but I did plant eight more additional lettuce starts and that is going to be bib lettuce now we are going to make our pie crusts and so in this bowl I'm using Acre Homestead's pie crust recipe. You can look it up on her website. There is two and a half cups of flour in here, one teaspoon of salt, and a half a cup of cubed butter, even though the recipe calls for one cup. Because when I make this, I like to put the first half cup in the bottom of my little tiny food processor, and then I like to add the second. Um, the last of the ingredients, the second half of a cup of butter and all my flour and salt. I just find that for me it's easier that way. Let's see if I can get all this in here. I think last time I made this I was in New Mexico and I had my great big um, scarlet mixer which I don't have any longer. Okay, don't get me started on that. I also have a quart of ice water right there. So what I like to do is just put this in here and put my lid on 
and give it a few little whirls. Here we go. And I don't want to grind it up too small. So occasionally I take it and I dump it back into the bowl, re-put my blade in and then check and see. And you can see that I still have pretty big chunks. So we're going to go ahead and put that back in there. And I don't need to put it all in there because all I'm interested in doing is getting my butter chunks a little bit less big. Let's pull that out and take a look. is probably where I want it. Yeah, that looks really good. Can you guys see that? It's got some big chunks of butter, but not very many, and I'm okay with that. So to this, we're going to add eight tablespoons of ice water. We'll see what it looks like, and then we're gonna divide it into two and put it into two pie size well, they're not going to be pie size. They're going to be about like that. Um, rolled out things of pie crust, which I can use this fall to make pies without having to do this messy job all the time. I tell you guys this all the time. Girl is lazy. Let's count. We want eight. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. That seems to be good. And we're just going to use our leftover biscuit container, not container, spatula. I'll get most of the big stuff off. There we go. Here we go. Let's bring you down. Okay. We don't want to over mix. We just want to moisten so that we can put it into a round pie shape circle shape for pie crust. Okay. And I'm going to take about, well, I'm going to use my hands and just sort of see if I can combine that a little bit better. Divide about half of it right onto this parchment paper. And I think that's going to need one more tablespoon of water. There we go. And let's kind of get that into a shape that we can work with. Okay. Now I'm going to give it just a minute here. Get all that loose pieces. Now this is not my favorite job. I do not enjoy making pie crust. But my future self loves to make pies without having to do the crust part. Okay, that feels good to me. So we're going to put a little bit of flour down and I'm going to put my pie crust right there and all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to get it in a circle just like that and then I'm going to wrap these in saran wrap but I want to make four of them first. So there's the first one. I'll just set it over here until we're ready for it. Let's go ahead and do the second one. And this is also going to need an additional tablespoon of ice water. There we go. I 
kind of get that combined. We don't want to overwork it. All I want it to do is combine enough to get it into a ball shape. And that looks perfect. And honestly, that's as easy as it is. Roll it in a little bit of my extra flour. That's good enough. Kind of press it together into a nice round shape. And there's the second one. And I want to make at least four. So let's go ahead and do another one. Now you guys have already seen me do this. So if you want to get up, get a cup of coffee, let your dog out, iron some clothes, now is a good time to do that. Two and a half cups of flour right there. One teaspoon of salt. Right, that's a half a tablespoon. One teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to add our first cube of cold butter. Into the bottom of this. We're going to do the exact same thing then. We're going to add, I'm going to mix that salt, doesn't really matter, but we're going to go ahead and put that in there. There it is. And then I need another half cup of butter. Let me grab it. Okay. I ended up making eight pie crust, so now I'm going to go ahead and wrap them. And I'll bring you down for one, I don't think you need to see more than that. But there is a nice round pie crust. And I'm just going to pull out some saran wrap. About that much, I think. And then I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up nice and tight. And you can see the big chunks of butter. That's going to make a super lovely, flaky pie crust. Okay, there's one. Okay, let me get the rest of these wrapped up and then I'll come back to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who can bake, cook, whatever, and not trash your kitchen, you guys are my heroes. Let's take a look, shall we? Yep, my kitchen is trashed. However, I have eight glorious pie crusts and I am going to now sit down I'm going to add a little bit of ice to this and drink it it's just flavored water and then I'm going to come back and clean that kitchen and when that kitchen's clean we're going to make breadcrumbs now breadcrumbs are pretty easy they're not nearly the mess of the biscuits and the pie crust and we will see if I want to do anything after that. I could certainly can some more beans if I wanted to. Um, I could make some more uh, buttermilk biscuit mix because I do use that for pancakes and whatnot. We'll see what kind of energy I have. Probably going to sit for about an hour. <laughs> Got flour all over everything. All right, I will see you guys in a little bit. All right, let me show you this space. At least that space is clean. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a little bit. 
Okay, I sat down for a little bit and then I came and got half my dishes done. My dishwasher is running, but I still have um, my skillet from this morning. I've got some grody little biscuit and pie crust messes going on over there. But um, I decided that while I'm waiting for my dishwasher to run through, I'm going to go ahead and start some chicken broth. And the first thing that I have is, well, actually, this is a turkey. So I have a turkey carcass. We're just going to go ahead and throw that in there. And then I have, which I've never done before, which is so weird. You'd think that I would know to do this. I saved the turkey neck when I roasted that turkey. And I'm going to throw that in there for broth. And then I don't have any carrots because I juiced all of mine. So I'm just going to throw in some dehydrated carrots for flavor. And that should be scrumptious. And then I have some veggies here. Oh good, looks like I have a ch couple chunks of celery. I didn't think that I did and I was kind of sad that I wouldn't have that flavor in my... I'm going to go ahead and use all of this because I don't have very much. So we're going to use the last of my onions and celery scraps for this particular broth. And these bags I'm just going to seal up and throw them in my freezer. And I know that they're there and I can put my vegetable scraps in there again. Now I like to pressure cook my broth for a few hours. So let's go ahead and get that done while I'm not doing anything else. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go follow the directions for your own uh, canner. But here is mine. I'm gonna move the lid from open to close. I'm gonna put this on, well actually I'm just gonna leave it on airtight because I'm pressure cooking. So I'm going to go pressure cook high, and I'm going to do about three hours, which is 180 minutes. And I might do it four, which is 180, 240. We'll do 240. There we go. Start. Okay, that will get that done while I'm doing other things today. So I think that'll be the last project that I do today. Other than get my kitchen clean again for supper, I'm in no mood to cook. So grandma will eat a corn dog or chicken tinder and Addie and I will fin for ourselves. Okay, that's done. Another project. I don't know if I'll be able to can this today. I might have to pop it in the refrigerator and can it tomorrow, but we'll see. All right, it is 4.06 in the afternoon and we are still working on some pressure, pressure, preservation uh, projects. Right here, you can probably hear my steam canner. I am, um, making some turkey stock. But what I want to do next is I want to take care I make some breadcrumbs. Now, I had a lot of bread in my freezer that um, I just hadn't gotten to and I want to make some room out there and I am also in need of breadcrumbs. I used the last of my breadcrumbs for my meatballs. So I am just going to, I'm gonna bring it down here. I'm just gonna throw this bread into this. And we're gonna go ahead and get some breadcrumbs made. I'm 
Hmm. I don't think I'm going to use these. These feel a little not right. Like they're kind of damp. So that's okay. I'm going to feed these to my chickens and my birds this afternoon. And they will be thrilled, but we are not going to use them for our breadcrumbs. Let me throw those back in the bag. Okay, there we go. Here are some buns that I never got around to using. Get my chicken stock out of the way. So here we will just go ahead and use these. Okay, there we go. Now, this project is not a glamorous project. It's not something that's, you know, crazy fun to do. It's not unfun. It's super easy. But it does make a difference when you need breadcrumbs to not have to make them at the time. So let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm not sure how many, but I'll show you my finished product, okay? When I'm done. Here, I'll let you see this part. these in the freezer but that'll be perfectly fine start with that all right I'll see you guys when I get back all right and there we have it we have two quarts of breadcrumbs now these are just going to go in my freezer because they're not going to be shelf stable if they're sitting on the counter. They will mold within just a few days. So there they are. And they'll be perfectly fine. Right? Don't buy breadcrumbs if you have bread and some sort of little food processor. Make your own. Now, when I go to use those, I can throw them on a cookie sheet and toast them. They'll be delicious, or I can use them as is. So, I've got some chicken scraps in my kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and gather those things up and take them out and feed it to my chickens. I'm actually going to let my chickens out here in a few minutes, too. Hmm. Still checking along, people. Mm, excuse me. I was just outside feeding my birds. Now, my kitchen's in fairly good shape, and behind me, in that crock pot, I am going to make a big uh, crock pot full of chicken tortilla soup. And most of that is 
stuff that I've either canned myself, I'll be using at least two quarts of chicken broth. This is chicken. You might remember I got that lemon chicken from the food bank. I brought it home, uh, divided it all up, and froze it. And today I'm going to use about two pounds. And then I've got some corn. The corn is mine. I have some navy beans in a can. This is a food bank item. I have some diced tomatoes. In my crock pot right now is a little bit of butter, some onions, and some peppers. So I'm just going to make it. <laughs> and I'm going to actually throw it into quart jars and freeze. I want to freeze two quart jars for meals down the line. And then I want to feed Addie and Grandma and I tonight. And then we won't have leftovers. We'll have a meal for a night where, hand to God, <laughs> I know I need to feed everybody, but I don't have the energy. How many of you feel like that every day? How many of you feel like that three or four times a week? Maybe one to two times a week, or maybe not at all. Maybe you not at all people got it going on. You've got secrets you need to share with us in the comments. All right, so I am going to, this is pretty frozen. I'm just going to defrost this a little bit and throw it into the crock pot. I'll bring you back when I either show you how many quarts I put up or how many or I'm filling the quart jars. Now I'm not canning this, I'm freezing it. So um, I don't know if this recipe would be okay to can. I think so, there's nothing in there that's not cannibal. Cannibal. Mm. Mm. Cannibal Hannibal Lecter. I have a chicken named Hannibal Lecter. She's a great big lavender Orpington hen and she's gorgeous. Um, all right, so we are doing good. Uh, I can't remember whose chicken it is. Uh, whichever one of you likes my chicken. Oh God, what is that chicken's name? She's a, a, a golden Orpington, a buff Orpington. Her name was Chicklet. Her name was Chicklet. And um, she's doing great. She's huge. She's bossy. I love her to death. All of my chickens are doing great. And so is Lucifina. Now, Lucifina doesn't live here anymore, but she went up to a farm. Our neighbor's uh, farm, well, he's not our neighbor. He's our good friend. Lives about six miles out of town, has a ton of property, and he took two of my roosters, and it's been perfect. So his daughters feed them and play with them, and they run the property, and it's all good. Okay, let me get some stuff into that crock pot and I will come back to you guys. All right, I was able to actually access the plugin over here, so let's take a look at this. In this crock pot is the beginning of chicken tortilla soup. You see onions and peppers. You see a little bit of butter because I was going to saute it, but uh, I decided not. So I'm going to add now a can of diced tomatoes and a can of navy beans. Now I'm out of navy beans right now, but if I'm fortunate enough to get a bag of navy beans when I go to the food bank on Wednesday, I'm going to can some pint size because I do have some quart size on my canning shelves, but a quart is more beans than I want in this soup. Oh, that fell to the floor. It's ready to, yeah. Okay. In there, I'm putting my two big blocks of chicken. That can just cook down. And debating whether or not to put in this corn right now. I think it'll be okay. Let's go ahead and get that in there. And then I don't have to worry about it. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. That is as easy as that is. Now, do I have taco seasoning? Chili seasoning. Yes, I do. I'm just going to add a packet of taco seasoning. If I didn't have taco seasoning, I would throw in cumin, coriander, garlic powder, onion powder, and that would probably do the trick. But there we are. All right, I am going to sit down and just relax and let this soup do its thing. Okay. All right. Now, like I said, I'm going to freeze. I want to get two quarts out of here to freeze. If I can, great. I still want to feed Addie and Grandma and maybe myself some soup tonight. But what I really want is two quarts in my freezer. Again, for those nights where Mama <laughs> does not want to feed the family. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, I believe, September the 7th. Check your calendars. I don't know. I can't keep track of it. It is about 8 o'clock in the morning. It is cold and rainy here, and bad news for my garden. Uh, looks like we're having, at best, 60-degree weather for 10 days and rain. So... I don't know what I'm going to do about what's in my garden. I fear that my tomatoes are not going to ripen. I may need to cut them all off and bring them in the house. But that's a story for another day. So, um, yesterday, I think when I left you, I was busy making a chicken tortilla soup. And I did. I made a great big crock pot of it. And it was super yummy. And I decided that I would freeze, um, there's one, there's two, uh, there's three, and there's a half. Um, I'm going to freeze three and a half quarts of this chicken tortilla soup, and I think it'll be delicious. One quart is enough to feed Addie grandma and myself. So we're going to count that towards the every little bit counts challenge. Now I'm not sure what we're going to do this morning. I know that I made a about eight quarts of turkey stock yesterday. It's in a bowl in my refrigerator. So I know we're going to can that. And aside from that, I don't know what else we're going to do. Let me just take a brief look and see if anything we could make some jam today. I have a ton of blueberries still, and I have some pepper, so I could make pepper jam, which would be great for sweet and sour meatballs. But I don't know. I'm feeling a little bit tired, and we will see. But anyway, I just wanted to show off my glorious, look at that. And that should freeze beautifully. Um, we'll see. All right, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and maybe, maybe not do something about my hair. I don't know what's going on over here <laughs> or over here. <laughs> oh, well. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And as I'm looking at myself, I don't know that I look beautiful, but I feel beautiful. So... What a great way to start Monday. All right, I hope you guys all feel the same way. I hope you look at yourselves and you feel, you know, that you are the best you and that you love you. I hope so. All right, I have not gone to food bank for three, maybe close to four weeks, and I'm going to try to make an appointment and go on Wednesday. If I do, I will certainly share that with you. In the meantime, we will continue on with our Everything Counts Challenge. Okay? All right. Ta-ta. 
All right, the morning is moving along. Grandma is sitting by the sliding glass doors. She's working on breakfast, apple juice, coffee, and her meds. Grandma, can you say hello? Hello. There she is. She's been spicy this morning. <laughs> That's okay, what's new? As you can see, I did take care of my hair, put on clean clothes, you know, a few. Uh, what are we doing today? It is almost 10 o'clock. It is 9.56. And earlier I said it was the 7th of November. I think I must be like some sort of time traveler. Yeah, you guys might, you know, now know a time traveler. It is not the 7th of September. It is the 9th of September. So I don't know where I went for two days, but I hope it was someplace fun. You know, Paris, Barcelona, London, Addis Ababa, if we want to go someplace wild, who knows? But anyway, we're back now in Granite Falls in my kitchen, and we've got to take care of some things. So right over here, you guys know my pressure cooker is right there, my Nesco electric canner. It has four quart jars, uh, lids and rims, all of which I washed with hot soapy water or came directly out of the dishwasher. I'm going to go ahead and process those for 10 minutes and then I'm going to process four quarts of turkey broth. And that turkey broth, wait till you see it, it just looks so um, dark brown. It looks beautiful and it should because I pressure cooked those bones. <laughs> for about four hours. Now, I have some tomatoes, not very many. This is what is from my harvest a day or two ago. And then this morning I went out and found these three bad boys. And I believe I'm going to do a very small batch of diced tomatoes. And I only want them in pint-sized jars because I want them to be sort of the equivalent of a can of diced tomatoes. And diced tomatoes are so cheap. But I'm going to go ahead and just this afternoon, I don't have anything really better to do unless I want to clean my house, and I don't. Uh, I'll make those diced tomatoes. I might make a big batch of bean soup. Now, I'm not promising that, so don't sit around and wait for it. But if I do, then I'm going to try those biscuits that I made um, the other day and make sure that we like those. I've already taken chicken scraps out to the chickens. They got all the turkey bones and the turkey, whatever was left after I strained that stock. They got all of that. They got some leftovers from the refrigerator that... Um, are past the point of human consumption, so off they go. And I have a sink full of dishes. I have unloaded the dishwasher, and I just need to sit down and do those dishes, but first I'm gonna sit down, and um, I've got a few things to do. I really can't can until this takes care of my jars, so that's where we're at today. I don't know if I have anything like spectacularly fun and even if I do I think that the turkey broth will go on this video but the diced tomatoes will go on the next video because it's just I think it's too long okay that's it for now all right I have been busy since I last saw you Grandma has um, taken her meds and has decided to go ahead and take a nap, so I just tucked her in. I did clean out my refrigerator and um, I got my broth ready to go. So I have three quarts in the canner right here. I'll just bring you down and um, get this one ready for you. Again, a little bit of vinegar. That's just what I like to do. Some people just use water and that's okay, but I like to use vinegar. So I just get that nice and tidy, give it a little swirl, make sure everything's good, put the lid on, fingertip tight, not tighter than that, and stick it in the canner. All right, you're gonna follow the directions for your own canner. Mine is a Nesco electric canner. It's very easy. Um, 
oh, my face is itching. We're going to turn it from open to close. Then I'm going to hit the pressure cook button high time. It's 40 minutes for broth. And then I just hit start and my exhaust valve is open. Okay, that's it. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit down, I've got to write some bills and who, who knows what else. Um, I wanna read the directions on how to can diced tomatoes. I probably only have enough for two pints, but I might as well use the tomatoes that I have. So we will see. Like I said, I won't be doing that on this video. I'll be doing it on the next. Um, every little bit counts challenge that I was too sick to participate in and I'm doing it now and instead of every day I'm just doing 31 projects okay all right I'll be back to you in a little bit